So from now, I'd like to have Linda Fritz Salazar, one of our senior partner uh, commercial agents, give you a brief overview of her gut feeling of the apartment market and where we're going and uh, see where we go. So this is Linda Fritz Salazar. Uh, Jim asked me to do the apartment market update. The apartment market is good. <laughs> No, of course I didn't tell you I was going to do that. We, we got to keep you guessing all the time. I did uh, pass out my notes to everybody so you can follow along, and, I, and I'd like to make this interactive if we can. Um, 2018, as we all know, was a record year, and then the uh, numbers for the first quarter of 2019 came out, and we all hit the floor and went, are you kidding me? We're still on track. We... Uh, the Phoenix, the first quarter of 2019 set a new sales peak record. We had over $2.1 billion in uh, money tra transacted in the first quarter, and that was in 86 transactions. So I don't know if, if the market's slowing down. I think people want to think it is just because it's gone too long. Ben and I were talking uh, before the meeting started about there is, there is talk, there's enough reason. We've been at this for 10 solid years now. But I keep saying fundamentals are good. Perhaps the nation uh, will slow down. Some of the coastal places, some of the big cities will slow down, but Phoenix has got everything in the world going for it. So I don't really, I don't really see a slowdown here. Um, cap rates uh, compressed again, 20, 20 basis points to about 5.3 last year. I'm seeing numbers now on Class A, new construction. They're in the fours. It's like, here we are, we're in the fours. But if you look at our market versus coastal markets, um, the returns are so much better here that we've got um, a lot of the huge REITs coming over. They're not afraid. Interest rates have actually uh, dropped. So you can, those loans at uh, four and a half, on a four and a half cap still qualify. I had a quote on, um, on a deal we're looking at uh, a bigger property and it was agency loan for 3.99 it's crazy just crazy everybody keeps talking about interest rates going up and they haven't they've come down um, I'm not going to just go through and read you can do that but the outlook uh, the outlook is positive Phoenix net migration healthy employment it's just fueling uh, new construction um, and, and bringing people here. What we don't have enough of, of course, are B and C product. Uh, and most of us here uh, try and specialize in that market. I put in here the um, highest performing submarkets and lowest performing submarkets. It's probably what everyone would think. Um, other than highest performing markets, I was surprised to see both South Phoenix and Union Hills in there. Um, lowest. Uh, let's see, the western suburbs and then Maryville, of course, we know has issues, but thank goodness with Grand Canyon University, they're, they're really helping to improve that area. Um, th all that stuff on the top was from the CoStar article that was written June 7th. I had another article from uh, uh, May, Capital One survey. They were at the National Multifamily Housing Council. Uh, their annual conference and they took a poll of the investors that were there and about 70 percent of them thought the market was going to have to drop uh, on one hand and then on the other hand they said but we're continuing to see very very strong fundamental fundamentals and of course we all know there is an abundance of capital that needs to be deployed so uh, I already mentioned that interest rates are falling um, we picked up some information from the Arizona Commerce Authority, their foundation for success. You can see where Arizona ranks. We read it every day in the newspaper. We're, uh, if we're not number one, we're in the top five for just about every major category um, in the country. Forecasting, uh, I, th I thought this was interesting. For 2019, the economic growth is thought to be around 2.8%. Employment growth, 2.7. Personal income growth, 6.4%, which is all good. 
and then population growth 1.6. At the end of 2018, um, our, our uh, population was about 7 million two. So if we figure a 1.6% increase, that's about 114,000 people, about 37%, I think is what we use, are renters. So that puts it at about 42,000 new renters in our market. And B and C product is about 65% of that. So we've got another 27,000 renters coming into our marketplace. Uh, the big question is going to be where do we find the product? So let's see. Oh, and then, and then what really kind of caught my fancy, quality of life here. We have seven professional sports teams none of which are any good yet, are at the moment, at the moment. We have over 400 golf courses. We have nine James Beard chefs. We have five wineries in the state that have scored 90 or more. We have over 300 sunny days per year and we have 22 national parks, monuments, and preserves. So, you just can't beat Arizona. How did you get wine into this apartment what? update? You know me. <laughs> and then lastly, I just, uh, for kicks today, I thought, well, what are the, let me see the top sales since January. And I, and I put in, oh, at first I put in from January over $80 million, and there were like 12. I couldn't believe 12 of them. So then I went to uh, 90 million, and there were four, just huge brand new properties. So anybody, any thoughts? I know we, we sit around on Tuesdays, we have our weekly meeting, and we go, well, what do you think? You know, what, what would change this market? And of course, we all talk about politics. I think a change in the administration would have an effect. Uh, some crazy world event would have a, an effect. Anybody, you, anything you worry about specifically? Um, sanctions to Mexico, we talked about that, and I said, you know what, it's never gonna happen. Jim and I had a discussion about that. He said, well, that would be crazy. I said, he won't do it, he won't do it. It's just all lip service. So, you, you know, anybody throw out, sure. <sighs> you know, we're seeing, um, uh, we're seeing a lot of new product where cities are getting involved. There's the co-living spaces, or the cities are getting involved and they're promoting a, a certain number for affordable housing. Um, it's, it's tough because the tax credit money isn't, isn't where it, it was. It's not as available. It's gonna be an issue. Uh, it's gonna be an issue all over the country. You know, if you look at California, especially Northern California, you have people living in their cars, uh, parked on the streets. So I don't think uh, Phoenix, hopefully, we've always been very progressive in, in trying to solve our problems, and, and hopefully we will. I don't have an answer. I really don't. Let me throw out a question to Alex, if you don't mind talking about um, what the bank thinks. Alex uh, was Wells Fargo, now works for the Bank of the West. Bank of the West has been a sponsor for us in the past. Um, how does the bank look at the long-term uh, economics of the country and of, of Phoenix in regard to lending on multifamily? How's your, how's your loan to value on? Seventy five percent. Okay. That's uh, fair. Yeah, Thirty that's year fair. term. I know that we use um, Bank of the West on a number of our refinancing and purchase things. They have a fairly good creative program. So. Uh, what kind of affordable product do you have? Uh, well, we have that. Oh, okay. Well, we are involved in the community of investment acts, so anything that's available there. We like the fact that there's government security in some cases. Mm -hmm. uh, but Section Section College doesn't have to worry about that. There's a guarantee. Right. Okay. Any other lenders in the audience want to talk? All right. 
Um, any other thoughts on the economy? Anybody really worried? Ben? That, that's it? You got a you maybe? I mean, Are you worried about the election in 2020? I don't know. I, it depends on who's uh, running. Trump's not going to run. It depends on who's going to win on the Democratic side. That is older. They show it. Um, what about the yield curve? That's what everybody's been speculating on right now. The yield curve is called the last six or seven in a row. And you know, it and it again. Yeah, and the last three lenders I've talked to uh, last week, because we were getting some quotes, they don't think it's as important as it used to be. They don't think it's a, an indicator like it like it used to be. And, and it's way up here for me, I, you know, to understand. So. Okay, Linda, thank yeah, you very much. Appreciate the help. Thank you.